If you haven't heard of the jaw-dropping scandal of the infamous American dad, Bill Cosby, then you're in for a riveting tale. This once revered figure in American entertainment had a seemingly perfect public image. But as the saying goes, do not judge a book by its cover. Beneath the surface, rumors swirled about his questionable behavior for years. However, it was a seemingly innocuous comment in a comedian's stand-up routine that would ultimately expose the truth and pave the way for Cosby's dramatic fall from grace. Bill Cosby, a name synonymous with laughter and entertainment Entertainment, held the world in his comedic grasp for decades. He had always been meticulous in crafting a public persona as a clean-cut comedian who shunned profanity, presenting himself as a positive role model, particularly for young black men. He publicly criticized elements like rap music and saggy pants, which he deemed detrimental to society. However, behind this facade, he concealed a dark history of sexual abuse and rape that spanned decades. This troubling narrative remained hidden from the public eye, shielded by Cosby's power, wealth, and influence until 2014 when Newsweek, Gawker, and comedian Hannibal Burris thrust it back into the spotlight. His journey through the bright lights of fame was, at that point, overshadowed by the dark clouds of controversy, leaving an indelible mark on his life and legacy. In this narrative, we will delve into the intriguing story of Bill Cosby, a man whose life has been a roller coaster of triumphs, scandals, and a quest for redemption. Bill Cosby's childhood was a blend of resilience and laughter, a necessity in a family struggling to make ends meet. With a father burdened by the weight of alcoholism and a mother's unwavering determination, Cosby found solace and humor. His innate talent for making people laugh became evident early on, a gift that would carry him far. After graduating from high school, Cosby enlisted in the U.S. Navy, serving as a hospital corpsman. During this period, he continued to cultivate his comedic skills, finding humor even in the most challenging of circumstances. As his military service came to an end, Cosby's path led him to Temple University, where he juggled various jobs while pursuing a degree in physical education. However, it was the dimly lit stages of nightclubs that beckoned to him. Cosby began performing stand-up comedy, captivating audiences with his witty observations and relatable anecdotes. In 1963, his life took an unexpected turn when he made a guest appearance on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Overnight, Bill Cosby became a national sensation. Cosby's rise to fame was meteoric. His comedy albums, including Bill Cosby is a Very Funny Fellow, right? and wonderfulness earned him Grammy Awards. He possessed a unique ability to transform everyday situations and family life into hilarious tales that resonated with people from all walks of life. Cosby's relatable and clean humor endeared him to audiences and solidified his place in the comedy pantheon. Then came The Cosby Show a groundbreaking sitcom that would define a generation. Premiering in 1984, it portrayed the Huxtable family, an upper-middle-class African-American clan led by Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable, played by Cosby. The show shattered stereotypes and showcased an African-American family that valued education, strong morals, and laughter. It was celebrated for its family-friendly content and for presenting a positive portrayal of black characters on television. The Cosby Show became a cultural phenomenon, consistently topping the ratings and garnering accolades, including Emmy Awards and Golden Globes. Cosby's portrayal of a loving and wise father figure became iconic. The impact of the show on American television and society cannot be overstated. Yet, as Cosby's star soared, shadows began to gather. Allegations of sexual misconduct and assault against him emerged, with Andrea Constant's case being the most prominent. In 2004, Constant accused Cosby of drugging and sexually assaulting her. The ensuing legal battle would come to symbolize a dark chapter in Cosby's life. On a fateful night of October 16, 2014, Hannibal Burris took the stage in Philadelphia, where he courageously unleashed a torrent of unvarnished truth about Bill Cosby, shattering the covering of Cosby's sanctimonious public image. With unapologetic candor, Burris confronted the stark contradictions within Cosby's persona. 
he openly criticized Cosby's self-righteous demeanor, expressing his disapproval of Cosby's condescending speeches to the black community regarding issues like saggy pants and perceived societal problems. Burris didn't mince words. He reminded the audience that despite Cosby's success on television and his claims of moral superiority, he stood accused of being a serial rapist. As he delivered this unvarnished truth, a palpable discomfort settled over the room. Burris, in his comedy bit, aimed to shed light on the allegations surrounding Bill Cosby and challenged the idyllic image associated with The Cosby Show. According to Burris, it was essential to address the allegations that had long been met with disbelief and denial. He encouraged his audience to explore the information available online about Bill Cosby rape to gain a better understanding of the unsettling reality. The accusations against Bill Cosby were not new. They had lingered since the 1970s and were even reported in a 2006 People magazine article. However, Cosby's influence, power, and financial resources had kept these allegations suppressed. He had allegedly used his stature to intimidate and silence the women who had accused him. Ultimately, a staggering 60 women would come forward, accusing him of sexual assault or rape. There was the case of Andrea Constant, an operations manager for Temple University's women's basketball team, an institution with which Cosby had deep connections. Constant's lawsuit alleged that Cosby invited her to his Cheltenham residence, gave her pills under the guise of relieving her stress, and then proceeded to assault her. Despite the seriousness of the allegations, the criminal case against Cosby faltered due to a lack of evidence. In November 2006, Cosby settled a civil case with Constant, seemingly closing the chapter. However, the floodgates began to open in December of the same year, when People magazine published a piece featuring accounts from other women who had come forward after Andrea Constant. The revelations were shocking, with some women admitting to having consensual relationships with Cosby and disclosing that he had made payments to some of them for years. The story lay largely dormant until 2014 when a renewed focus on these allegations emerged, thanks to Newsweek, Gawker, and Hannibal Burris. Cosby's modus operandi became increasingly clear. He would invite women to his home, drug them, and then assault them. In some cases, the victims had no recollection of the horrifying events. Many others recalled being drugged and incapacitated, unable to prevent the assaults. Cosby would then allegedly employ his celebrity status to intimidate the women into silence, threatening to blacklist them from the industry. These victims, often young and aspiring actresses, felt powerless due to Cosby's influence and fame. This candid revelation by Hannibal Burris ultimately reignited the conversation around Bill Cosby's alleged crimes and thrust the once beloved comedian into a maelstrom of legal battles, public outrage, and a stark reevaluation of his legacy. Cosby maintained his innocence, insisting that all his sexual encounters were consensual. Nevertheless, in 2017, a high-profile trial led to his conviction on three counts of aggravated indecent assault, and he was sentenced to three to ten years in prison. This trial was just one facet of Cosby's tumultuous legal journey. His reputation lay in tatters, his legacy tarnished, and his future uncertain. However, in a startling twist, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned his conviction in June 2021, leading to his release from prison. The court ruled that an earlier agreement had been made with a previous prosecutor, precluding his criminal prosecution. Cosby's release ignited heated debates about the legal system, prosecutorial misconduct, and the rights of his accusers. It was a polarizing moment, leaving many wondering whether justice had been served or denied. However, a new chapter in the ongoing legal saga surrounding Bill Cosby has emerged. As a previously unknown accuser, referred to as Jane Doe, has stepped forward with allegations of sexual assault. According to court records obtained by Rolling Stone, Jane Doe claims that Cosby, now 86 years old and disgraced, drugged and raped her in his dressing room in 1992. Disturbingly, she alleges that an NBC employee stood outside the door during the alleged incident. Jane Doe's lawsuit was filed in New York under the Adult Survivors Act, 
a 2022 legislation that temporarily opened a window for victims of sexual offenses to file civil suits against their abusers, even when the statute of limitations had passed. This window is set to close on November 24, 2023. In a conversation with Rolling Stone, Jane Doe's attorney, Jordan Rutsky, who has represented multiple Cosby survivors, described how his client has been empowered by the legislation. Several other women, triggered by the feeling that any semblance of justice achieved have been undone, have also been inspired to take action as a result of the Adult Survivors Act. This new legal development has cast further light on the complex and enduring legal battle surrounding Bill Cosby, underscoring the ongoing pursuit of justice by his accusers. The woman's story unveils a disturbing encounter that allegedly transpired in 1992 when she was invited to the set of The Cosby Show in Queens, New York. The purpose for the visit was ostensibly to discuss a potential guest starring role on the NBC sitcom with Bill Cosby. A former NBC employee, Frank Scotty, who had previously expressed remorse over his role in facilitating Cosby's meetings with young women, had Doe and other models and actresses wait outside Cosby's dressing room for their respective appointments. When it was Jane Doe's turn to meet with Cosby, she she entered the room and the door was shut behind her, according to the lawsuit. Cosby purportedly offered the woman a drink, of which she took two sips. The lawsuit contends that an unknown intoxicant had been placed in the beverage, causing her to lose consciousness. When she briefly regained awareness, she found herself slumped in a chair. Her underwear had been removed. Cosby's pants were down and he was allegedly in the act of sexually assaulting her. Subsequently, the woman woke up at home with no recollection of how she had been transported there. The lawsuit asserts that the individual believed to be Frank Scotty remained outside the room throughout the alleged assault, ensuring that Cosby could assault without interruption. As of now, Bill Cosby faces several civil suits from women across the United States, including California, Nevada, and New York. Among them, actress Linda Ridgway White Deer filed a suit in September, alleging that Cosby had forced her to perform oral sex on him during an audition in 1971. In June, nine women, including Janice Dickinson and Lisa Lata Lubin, sued Cosby in Nevada. The most recent suit was brought forth by Donna Motzinger, who claims that Cosby drugged and raped her before sending her home in just her underwear in the Bay Area in the 1970s. Notably, in June, a jury found Cosby guilty of the sexual battery of a 16-year-old girl in the 1970s, awarding her $500,000. Is justice being administered adequately in your opinion? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.